Martin Scorsese is responsible for some of the most acclaimed and iconic films of all time. His films often deal with depraved and disturbed protagonists, and rather than present them as straight-up villains, instead it utilises the film medium to take us deep into their psyche, so that we may understand and empathise with their way of thinking, whether it be Howard Hughes's growing OCD in The Aviator, Jake LaMotta's paranoia in Raging Bull, or Taxi Driver's Travis Bickle's sense of isolation and loneliness. Scorsese utilises numerous methods in order to achieve a connection between his audience and his characters. It's a testament to his ability to do this that he somehow manages to get people to cheer on the likes of Jordan Belford in The Wolf of Wall Street, or Henry Hill in Goodfellas, characters who would be presented as villains in other films. One of the many ways in which Scorsese has us identify with such complex and morally ambiguous individuals is the use of mirrors. Characters in Scorsese's films often talk to themselves in the mirror. It's a method to showcase deep introspection and to give us a peek into the state of mind of a character. We've seen throughout cinema, villains do terrible things, and rarely do they get an opportunity to express their point of view, to tell their side of the story. Having a character talk to himself is an easy way to do this, and when coupled with the clarity and reflectiveness of a mirror, both literally and figuratively, the suggestion is that we have been graced with an opportunity to see deep into the souls of these characters in their private moments of reflection and contemplation, looking inward at the lowest points in their lives. However, with Scorsese's characters, there is a great irony in this action, because almost oxymoronically, when characters in his films talk to themselves in the mirror, they are not in a state of clarity, but are in a state where a sickness has taken hold of them, and they are not right in the head. The very act of talking in a mirror, rather than breaking down barriers and layers, instead ironically displays and even in some cases feeds their paranoia or ego, thus making the situation worse, and any mirror scene in Scorsese's filmography is usually followed up with an implied or actual scene of violence, depravity or insanity. So what are some examples? Of course, there is the classic, you talking to me scene in Taxi Driver, perhaps the most famous scene in Hollywood history of someone talking to themselves in a mirror. The increasingly deranged Travis Bickle, becoming more and more unhinged with each diary entry, purchases some firearms and fantasizes about putting a gun on someone who starts on him. We as the audience see scenes like this, and as a result, we know Travis's intentions are not righteous. So when he follows up the mirror scene with an assassination attempt on a senator, and then later on a killing spree for which he is praised, we know he is far from a praiseworthy character. Cape Fear also has a similar scene with Max Cady and Amira, before the serial rapist begins a spot of stalking. In Scorsese's The Aviator, the film ends with entrepreneur and film director Howard Hughes repeating the phrase, way of the future to himself in the mirror with a sad look of resignation as his OCD and mental health issues take hold of him. We know, as the film ends, that the way of the future for Hughes is not going to be a pleasant one. This scene takes place right at the end of the film. In another, Shutter Island, it takes place at the beginning. US Marshal Teddy Daniels, who is revealed to either be a mental patient at Ashcliffe or is brainwashed into thinking he is, depending on your interpretation of the movie, has a minor breakdown in front of the mirror during the boat scene before he gets onto the island, telling himself it's only water, which is obviously linked to his mental condition where water plays a big part as a result of his previous trauma. It's almost sickeningly sad how unaware Teddy is to the reality of the situation as he tries to pull himself together in this private moment, not knowing the nightmare that awaits him on the island. And in The Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belford, the man who cheated innocent people out of millions without remorse, gives himself a small ego-inflating pep talk before the famous scene where his quaalude overdose robs him of his motor functions. Each of these scenes reflects something sinister within the protagonist, whether it's their tendency for violence like Travis Bickle, or a disorder that can't be helped like Howard Hughes. When staring deep into their own souls, rather than be met with a little boy in a man's body, a misunderstood person, 
or a number of other movie cliches, they face themselves for who they really are, whether they be deluded, apathetic, or insane. The only one that seems to break this chain is the ending of Raging Bull. In a change of pace, when Jake LaMotta recites Marlon Brando's lines from On the Waterfront to himself in the mirror, he seems to be at peace with himself, more so than any other time in the film, having come to a realisation about who he is and why his world came crashing down upon him, as suggested by the line, it was you, Charlie, meaning himself. This tender, thoughtful moment, coming after two hours of furious boxing matches and domestic punch-ups, feels like a cool, calm breeze at the end of a wild, terrifying storm, and is the kind of moment Lamotta will only ever share with himself and no one else, not even his family. It's a stark contrast to an earlier scene where he breaks down in a prison cell, facing a brick wall, a wall of blackness. Here he can actually see himself for what he is, as alluded to also by the Bible verse the movie ends on, At first I was blind, but now I can see. That is of course, unless you were in the school of thought that when Lamotta says it was you Charlie, he means his brother, as in On the Waterfront, Charlie is the brother of Brando's character. If this is the case, then Raging Bull's ending might just fall into a long line of mirror scenes in Martin Scorsese's filmography where egotistic, prideful individuals fail to recognise the faults within themselves. And just as a bonus, you might find yourself interested in a 1967 short film Scorsese directed called The Big Shave, in which a character spends the entire duration of the film in front of a mirror. For similar videos and related content, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification button for more videos. Thanks for watching.